Hey everybody, RC here. I just finished watching the Twit Photo podcast and I saw that Jeremy was talking a little bit about, you know, protecting your images online and talking about a watermark image. And he, he kind of pointed out this entire thing about this invisible watermark that you can't see when you're working with it. Now, this was something that I was talking to him about when he was down here last. And I said, you know what? This is something that I think that people should use a lot more and I don't understand why people don't use it. But there's a couple of things that I think that you should keep in mind with this. Number one, can any image be stolen? Obviously, of course, any image can be stolen, right? Just as the same way that anybody can break into your house. I mean, really, think about it this way. Let's say, let's pick your car. Your car is probably going to be easy. So imagine uh, you want somebody to break into your car. You don't want somebody to break into your car. So what you're going to do is you're going to lock your door. Okay, but if somebody has enough time and they have a Slim Jim, they can pop your door. Okay, so maybe what you need to do is you need to put the club, that little metal brace on the steering column to prevent people from turning. Okay, well, if the guy popped your door and he carried a hacksaw with him, he could probably cut through the club if he had enough time. All right, well, if you, if you put a club that kind of locked to the gas pedal, then, you know, and made that out of iron. All right, well, if the thief walked with, uh, you know, a, a jigsaw, you know, a hacksaw, he walked with a Slim Jim to pop your door, and he brought an arc welder with him, then given a long enough amount of time, he could break into your car. So invariably, anything could be broken into. You don't necessarily look at protecting your images from a standpoint of, can I make them protection proof? What you're doing more is you're trying to say, can I reasonably put a couple of steps in place to try to protect me where the amount of effort that I put into it can off be offset? So if I don't spend a lot of time putting this in and it protects me at a couple of levels, I'm not expecting 100% protection, but if it can protect me a little and it doesn't cost me that much, that's what I'm going to want to do. At least at that point, if somebody tries to break in and they look at it, they walk over to the car and they go, oh, there's a club. You know what? That's going to take a lot of effort. I'm going to move to another one that doesn't have a club. That's what we're trying to do when we're, protect when we're protecting images. We're not trying to make them bulletproof. We're trying to make it just a little bit tougher for somebody to play with. That said, let's say that I want to take this image and I want to protect it. Right, so I'm inside of Lightroom. I'm just going to go ahead and just right click. And I'm going to edit this and I'm going to edit this in Photoshop CS 5.1. I'll go ahead and I'll edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. And this is all you have to do. Now, let me go ahead and just pop another browser over here and I'm going to go to Digimark, digimark.com. So this is a company that's designed to do watermarking inside of images. So basically they put watermark stuff in your images. So in here, I'm going to go to Digimark Discover, and what I want for this is I want to work with this to make to use for images. So in here, there's Discover, there's Safeguards, right? So I'm going to click on Online Image Safeguards, and inside of here, there's Professional, Small Business, and Enterprise. You pick whichever one you're going to want, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to pick Browse These Features, and you can sign up for whatever this is. I don't want to get into what you know what it costs. It's it's actually not that bad, but you sign into it, and I think it's something like I think at one point I saw something about well, like a hundred bucks or something to sign in for it. Now. Once you do that, I'll go ahead and I'll click it here just so that people don't think that I'm freaking them out. So it's 49 versus 99, right? So you're going to sign up with them. They're going to give you a username. And they're going to give you a password, right? That's all they're going to do. Now, inside of Photoshop, one of the things that a lot of people have, you know, they've seen it, but they've never done anything with it is this entire thing called Digimark. See, it's great out there. It's great out there because I have a 16 bit image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image mode and I'm going to switch this down to 8 bit. Now, if you go to filter Digimark, it's always been there, but no one's ever done anything with it. This is what you're supposed to do with it. You go to Digimark, you go to embed watermark. Now you see that I have a Digimark ID. That's the ID that I signed up with at the Digimark site. If you don't have one, you would be clicking on change or sign up or whatever it is. I'm going to put in a copyright year. And then I'm going to put in a watermark durability. And here's the trick. I'm going to move it all the way to four. And I'm going to uncheck verify. Basically, it just brings up like a name. I'm going to get and click on OK. Now, in a couple seconds, that applies this watermark. 
And then once the water, oh, look at that, it's done. Do you see the watermark? Here, let me zoom in. Do you see it? Well, it's everywhere. You just can't see it. Matter of fact, I'm gonna try to zoom in a lot. Pay attention right here. You see these little things right here? This little, it probably isn't gonna show up very well, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do it before, after. Before, after, before, after, before, after, before, after. So, before, after, before, after. That's where the watermark is. It's everywhere and you can't see it. So now I'll take this image and maybe what I'll do to give myself an added thing, I have an action that places my signature. I'll go ahead and I'll place the signature that's in here. And all that does is it takes a PNG file that I made with a separate signature. I have that over on a YouTube video if you wanna watch that. I'll transform that down, I'll bring it over here to the lower right hand corner, and then I'll drop the opacity. I don't want it to get in the way, I just kinda of wanna make sure that people know that I did it. If I get it out of the way, then people are more apt to leave it alone. So now that I've done that, I can do all of that stuff and then I can do a save as, and then I can save this wherever I want. That's ready to go. That's all you really need to do with these images. Now, if I wanna take this and I wanna build this into an action, it's a lot easier to be able to do that. The next YouTube video that I'll do is I'll show you how to run this so that when you're going into, you're exporting out of Lightroom, you would just export this stuff out and then you would just have it run the embedding of this Digimark thing. But the cool part about it is that now you can take that image and you can post it online and should somebody get it and start using it, you can go ahead and you can say, hey, listen, that's my image. At any point in time, they can go ahead and do that. Now, here, let me show you this. I'll go ahead and I'll go over to my Google Chrome and I'm just gonna go ahead and type in 500px.com and I'll go to my About RC. Now, inside of here, let's get and go to Dear Santa. So I'll take this image, I'm just gonna drag the, or just click on it right here. I'll go ahead and I'll right click this, I'll save the image, and I'll save it right on my desktop. Now, inside of Photoshop, I'll go ahead and I'll open it. Now, from here, I'll go ahead and click on Read Watermark. See? That image has a watermark. It's online, but it has a watermark. Moreover, they have a service here on this Digimark where you can sign up and you can actually go outside and track this content. So it'll troll websites to find that. When it finds it, then you can go ahead and prosecute these people, provided that you've registered these images with a copyright office. So that's one thing that you can do for that. You can also come over here and use programs like TinEye, TinEye is really, really good for reverse image searches. Put in the image, it'll tell you where it finds it. You can even go over to Google Images and inside of Google Images, you can go ahead and add a picture, right? Upload an image or paste a URL and it'll tell you where those images are as well. So these are a whole bunch of different types of tools for you to find them, embed your watermarks and get yourself a little bit more protection, not bulletproof, but enough to make sure that you can offset some of this protection. Now, if you wanna follow more stuff about what I do, you can always just go to aboutrc.com. That's my blog. That's where I have a whole bunch of stuff. You can also follow me at Google Plus at gplusrc.com. If you wanna take a look at anything that I do from a teaching standpoint, obviously you can just go over to Kelby Training.